Man, big shout out to Flocker. I'm glad he did this sit down with Shannon Sharp and he pretty much um in this clip he pretty much stated why he stopped going back to the hood. You know, the gist of everything is that yo, he not going to a place where all the odds are stacked up against him. You know, Flock was one of those guys that, you know, he's really from Atlanta, really from the streets. So once he started to get like a little bit of paper, you know, the first thing he wanted to do was flexing everybody in his hometown, flexing everybody in the hood, let him know that, yeah, I'm that dude, you know, I really done made it. So um, he said he had like, he had bought like a Phantom. Like everybody knows when it comes to the cars, you know, right at the top, right at the pinnacle, man, it's that Rolls Royce. Like you can't beat it. Like it's just, it's huge car, you know, it causes a lot of attention. Like everybody's head's turning like, man, like who's in that whip? Who's in that car? So, you know, he used to ride around in the Phantom around the hood. Man, you doing stuff like that, all you're doing is just taunting the hood. You're just making people want to hate you, making people want to shoot up that car. Like, it's just, I'm so glad, you know, Walker finally uh, came to this whole realization because a lot of times when it comes to stuff like this, you know, by the time it really clicks for a lot of people, you know, they're already, like, in the graveyard or they're behind the cell, like, they're behind the wall. So it's just, Walker's one of those lucky people that, um, that, that really made it out, like, when it comes to the streets. Man, some of y'all going to make it, some of y'all ain't. Like, that's just the way it goes. It, it's just, he's just really lucky because, you know, a lot of things could have went the complete opposite way for Walker. Like, if you know his story yeah, with Gucci, like, he was Gucci shooter. And we already know how crazy Gucci is. Like, I think Gucci has one of the craziest rosters in 1017. And I think everybody's either locked up or they did for one reason or another. Like, I don't know what it is with Gucci and, and the, the, the eyes that he has, the talent that he has. He can definitely pick them out. But he even got another artist that's wanted on, like, first degree first degree murder. And we just see what happened to Big Scar. You know, uh, he, he passed away from, from pills. Um, we got Pooh Shiesty. He behind the wall for, like, what, six and a half years. Fujiano, he behind the wall for another five years. It's just... Man, it's just really sad, man. It's just really unfortunate, man. I'm just glad. And then Walker even said at the um during the clip that um he used to ride by, by this place in Atlanta. And there was this like like nice, like posh, like really like condo downtown. And instead of, you know, putting the money towards that, that is, you know, gone up four or five times in value, he he ended up buying that car. And everybody knows when it comes to cars, man, as soon as you drive it off the lot, man, it's going down in value. You cannot even get the same price that you once got it for once you drive off that lot. As soon as you put a little bit of miles on it, that's it. That car now becomes from new to you. So I'm just glad Walker, you, we get to see the growth for him. I mean, Walker used to be in a club, holding the wall clubs, you know, going crazy. Uh, him and uh, uh, OJ, the juice man. Like, if you see the growth from the maturation process, it just goes to show you, like, what a bunch of the street artists that passed away in their early 20s, how they would have looked when they turned in their, uh, their late 30s or in their 40s. Because we just seen it with, with Walker and OJ and, and Gucci. We just see, like, the turnaround and complete transformation. So, man, Walker going from them, from them clubs where it ain't really safe. You know, you got to, like, watch your back. You know, you clutching every time you see a group of people walking your way to now. When I see Walker, yo, know, he's across the world. He's doing these EDM uh, uh, concerts. You know, it's high tempo, having a good time. It's just a blast. You ain't got to worry about no ops. You ain't got to worry about no shooters, nothing like that. It's just like, man, I just I just think of like all the rappers that we just lost. And it's just like, man, where they would have been if they would have made it into their, their 30s or to their 40s. It just, we can't even talk about the people behind the wall. Like, once you get that life sentence... Man, you out of the way, you you out of sight, you out of mind, man. Everybody forgets about you. Everybody moves on. You know, this world doesn't stop, man. This world keeps on spinning. So I'm just happy for Walker, man. I'm just really am, man. Just to, to, to see if you haven't seen the whole interview with him and Shannon Sharp, you know, shout out to Shannon Sharp. Like, he, he's he got this podcast game on lock. Like, the interviews that he's able to get, man, he's just, the one with Mike Vick is great. Um, the one with Magic Johnson, um, this one with Walker. And then um, he just did a really great one with Deion Sanders. That's like a must watch because uh, people were giving Deion a hard time. But I was one of them because I was like, man, come on, Deion. Like, you know, left the HBCU for Colorado, like just like that. But hey, man, you know, big shout out to Walker. Big shout out to, you know, Deb, Anthony, you know, his mom. And she did a really great job in raising that man. But uh, that's really my take on this whole conversation, man. Like if you want to, uh, comment if you want to, subscribe if you want to. If not, like goes on, man.